So by being this no name brand, it's not just the no name, but it also carries some other connotations. No identity, no reputation, no customer loyalty, no quality, no value, <laughs> no second chances, no longevity. Let me tell you another little secret, folks. Did you know when you have a strong brand, people are more forgiving, they're more patient. If you're that company that nobody ever heard of, you make one mistake, Jack, they're ready to throw you under the bus and bag you over twice. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I know sometimes we read more things to it. We think, it, well, you know, this person had an attitude, this person had a preference of one race or one ethnic group or one geographic location over another. No, what people have a preference for is a brand that they can trust. So before you start writing off these reasons that people won't do business with you, take a look at your brand. Now, here's something you may or may not know, but I want you to know before I leave here today, your brand generates a perceived value. And it is no joke. It is proven. It is a fact that people will spend more money for a popular brand than a product they've never heard of, even though it's the exact same product. Something to think about. And the minute I discovered that, man, let me tell you, <laughs> that was like a light bulb went off. I thought I raised my price the next day. I go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to raise my price and I'm going to invest money in branding. Because the brain, once you get the customer, there's something called lifetime value. So you can't just focus on that one customer. So if you spend your money elevating your brand, you're going to bring in more customers, you can raise the price and then let that lifetime value kick in. People will pay more money for a more popular brand than an unpopular one. Here's something else. People will buy a popular brand more frequently <laughs> than an unpopular brand. Think about that for a minute. When the brand is strong, you just keep buying it. You buy it, all they gotta do is slap a label on it, they'll buy whatever you sell it. That's what I tell some of my clients. I say, look, our issue right now is not <laughs> what you think it is. Our issue is we need to get some more products out here because we have built this strong brand and people are looking for something to buy that you offer. I have an offer right now. People are just, clamoring to find his next book they don't it doesn't even have to be a book if he put out a two-page white paper tomorrow they'd buy everyone he could he could write as fast as he could write it so when that brand is built and it's strong one of your jobs at that point is to start keep finding products that you can slap that brand on folks in the clothing industry they do this they're very popular they've been notorious for this People see a brand as a safe choice. And in a world of safety, in a world of, uh, we talked about the five reasons people buy, safety and security. That's right up there on number one and number two. Your brand is seen as a safe choice when it is strong. And the opposite is also true. If I don't know you, haven't heard from you, don't know about you, or you got a bad brand, I do not see you as safe and you're not gonna get my money. Think about that. As I stated earlier, people are more patient if your brand is strong. They give you all kinds of chances. And I know sometimes we like to, we like to write that up as something else. It's the brand. They're like, man, every time I turn around, they I make one mistake and they done run off to somebody else complaining. It wasn't them, it was you. <laughs> they jacked up brands. Get your brand straight. Invest in your brand. They will give you that second chance because they see you as a safe choice. When you're not seen as a safe choice, you got one time to mess up. And then, man, they're running off to the Better Business Bureau telling their friends not to do business with you because you had a weak brand. We're making this a lot more complicated. Sometimes we're looking for all these reasons that people scatter. Weak brand. Now, let's talk about what a brand does for you. 
One thing, it delivered your message clearly. It confirmed your credibility in the marketplace. It emotionally connects with your audience. It motivates people to make that buying decision. And it creates user loyalty. Now, that's one you cannot overemphasize. Man, let me tell you something. I discovered some of these things just by doing it. <laughs> but now they have been indoctrinated into my marketing secret sauces. That strong brand, man, you can tell something to people as long as they are alive. If your brand is strong. If you have a weak brand, they're going to buy from you one time. Then they're going to go back out there and start shopping the next time they need it. Let me repeat that. If your brand is weak, they will buy from you one time and they feel no connection or loyalty to you. The next time they need it or they run out of it, they're back out there in the marketplace looking again because you didn't have that branding foundation. So how do you get this brand? I'm sure some of you wondering, what the heck? Gateway, you got me all buttered up here. Well, we're going to start with some of the things we talked about. Think about, go back to your company culture. What is it that you represent? When I do my 10 commandments of marketing, the first thing I say, before we talk about any type of sales, you have to decide what kind of customer you're going to be. What kind of client you're going to, I'm sorry, what kind of company you're going to be. You're going to be a friendly company, high tech company, low tech, price, worry about the environment, eco friendly. These things become part of your brand. Do you treat your employees fairly? Part of your brand could be that you, you pay the best salaries in town. <laughs> that goes a long way. How you treat your employees. You may have the best customer service department, like we talked about with Norstons. That becomes part of your brand. So the part of your brand starts before you start creating logos and websites. And literature. The brand starts with you, the business owner. What kind of company are you? Just to throw up a logo and you haven't established what type of company you are, you kind of put in the horse before the cart or the cart before the horse. <laughs> Whichever way it works. So the first thing starts with you. Then here are some things that you can do that are tangible. Get yourself a logo. And then I'll tell you something else you do. You put that logo on everything. I mean, I'm telling you. I'm, I don't do that. Uh oh, what's that over there? Never mind. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> when I when you see this, I want you to think about a, a company and a guy that talks about building businesses and putting people to work. Talk about the good marketing gospel. Bring you all this information every Friday. That brand is out there, Jack. And I hope it's all good. Well, I, I must say it is pretty good. I mean, I get people calling me all the time. And I must say, I've never. Don't start today now. <laughs> I never had one negative call about what I'm doing with this particular marketing pool bit TV show. They might talk about me behind my back, but <laughs> I feel the brand is pretty strong because one, we have we do have a, a culture with friendly, approachable, knowledgeable, professional, informed. And this logo is the iconic representation of that. Okay. You might now if you have one of those names that's just I hate to say it, some of your names are a little out there. <laughs> it doesn't say anything about what you do. You name after grandma Lizzie and and uh it doesn't have doesn't tell people that you do window dressing. Lizzie's company. What the hell? Well, you better get you a nice little slogan or something to go along with it. <laughs> you need to explain that company, and that's become part of your brand as well. Like we say, uh, building strong businesses in our community, putting people to work. So you want to kind of let your slogan kind of help you along with that brand too, because some people, like I say, they're either visually conscious or they like to they readers. They like to intellect intellectualize words that they see. Uh, now you want to integrate your your brand into every aspect of your business. And when I say brand, I don't say just your logo, your culture, 
how you treat your customers. So you got to call those, call that meeting. I have a try to have a meeting with my staff at least once a week. I know they're like, oh boy, here comes, here it comes again. And they're like, then when they get there, they're surprised because I'm like, I didn't load them up for a ton of work or criticize their work. Now this this emphasize now. We're gonna treat people right. I know some of these customers can really get on your last nerve. I'll be the first one to admit it. There's a couple I just want to put in my headlock. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that, but sometimes your brain be going there though. But as a company, that's not gonna help our brand. They can say, look, Gatewood put this customer in a headlock. <laughs> that becomes part of your brand. But what the brand, what my brand has emanated is that we are patient. I mean, really almost to a fault. I had to actually do a, I had a conversation with somebody the other day and they were telling me, so look, man, you just, you guys are too nice. You're being taken advantage of. I said, look, we've been around 30 years. <laughs> I know a lot of companies that didn't make 30 days. So we're doing something right. So you got to do what works for you. Okay. That becomes part of your brand. So you need a company persona. And sometimes it starts with that owner. It goes back to that purpose. That's the place to start. What is your purpose? Is to save the world? Save the environment? Put people to work? It can't be just about making money. So there are times that money is not there. So your brand can't dry up just because you had a bad month. <laughs> brand is, it has to last, it has to be enduring. So develop that persona and then you build things around that persona. You also look at things like your colors, like red and black. Those are like creative colors. They speak for creativity. Yellow, vibrant. You know, you know, every time you see something with a kid, in, it pertains to kids, it's yellow. It three primary colors, blue, yellow, red. That's a branding. That's branding at work. You ever notice that a lot of law firms have blue gray and black that's like seriousness so there are a lot of little things you can do to help project this brand that's why you need to talk to somebody to, who knows how this stuff works and create brand standards for your marketing materials the colors the font so when you see that sometimes it's just that color that stands out sometimes that color alone you ever see a big old brown truck going down the road? <laughs> the way they the way they're treating these drivers nowadays, you might want to rethink that color of that truck because they're gonna assume you're a delivery driver for UPS. You got a big old brown box truck. <laughs> branding, ladies and gentlemen. Branding. Branding. Now you also have to deliver your brand. The worst thing you can do is to build this brand and then not deliver. Because when you develop when you develop a brand, you are making a promise to your customers, a charge to keep. You have to deliver on that brand. I can't get up here on this airwaves and talk about how nice we are. The next person called me, I had one of my employees curse the person out. <laughs> That's a no-no. That's how you kill your brand. So you got to be consistent. Deliver on that brand promise. If your brand said you're going to be a low price product in the marketplace, you have to deliver on that. If you say that your brand is eco friendly, you can't be walking around there also with plastic, with foam plastic cups. <laughs> That's running counter to your brand. You have to, you making a promise to your stakeholders with that brand. And you have to deliver on it. Now, if you have you have some questions, as Mr. Maxwell said, there is some science behind these colors, and that is so true. Now, if you have a question about anything we talked about today, if you need some help with your branding, your marketing, logo design, website design, we are not the cheapest person in town, but it's all relative. For one thing, you're gonna get your money's worth plus. And you won't have to keep jumping around. You know, this is what happens. People come to me. It kind of ticks me off a little bit. But part of my brand, I don't get ticked off. <laughs> but I don't, I don't articulate it anyway. People come to me. They've been to like five different companies. 
And then by the time they get to me, they broke. <laughs> well, look, Gatewood, I can't really pay you what I know you're worth because I paid this other company and they ran off with my money. Or they didn't know what they were doing. Now, unfortunately, you come to the right company because a lot of times I would take that in consideration. That might be a con for as I'm concerned, but that seemed like there'd be a pretty good percentage of the clients that come to us. And we go ahead and say, okay, look, all right, look, I understand. Because I know that if you didn't, if that if you hadn't seen this lesson on branding, or if you're not properly branding, that could very well happen. But now you've come to a company that's gonna make it right for you. So yeah, I will. I would, because I made some mistakes of my own when I was just getting started, like that, starting that payphone business. If I had known a Robert Gatewood, Jack, I'm telling you, I'd have $20,000 in my pocket right now. Because nobody told me about the industry life cycles. So I can't go to the next person and give them $20,000 also because I'm broke now. <laughs> so yeah, I will give you a forgiveness discount if you call Gatewood. I'm telling you that right now because I understand how it works. But you, but once you come to me, you got to listen. Do I know everything? Nope. But I do know this. Everything I ask you to do, every piece of advice I give you is most likely has been tested. I'm not going to waste your money. I treat your money like it's mine. And I'm going to take care of mine. <laughs> All right, folks. This is a... <laughs> We even break out the violin. All right, folks, this is the marketing pool. I want to thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. Uh